Now, when you're buying your house, we're going to want to make sure you have a job or you have some kind of income because you got to understand the bank is taking a risk. Big dog, we got a situation here. I'm going to need some backup. Giving you this loan. They want to make sure that their loan is secure because you have a job. You have some kind, you have some kind of way to pay them back. They want to make sure the bank isn't in the industry of losing money, in the industry of making money or loaning money. And one of the ways they do that is by giving you a mortgage. So they want to make sure that, hey, you've been working for at least two years or a year. You have some kind of income coming in. Is it a rental property? They want to make sure that they can see money is coming in. This is generating steady and consistent income is coming in so they can feel safe. We're going to talk about the things you need to do or to pay attention to if you want to qualify for a mortgage. So before we get started, I need you to understand each one of these topics can be its own separate video. Right now, I just want you guys to understand the big concepts and the ideas of the main points and the things you want to be aware of and to know about to get qualified for a mortgage. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so let's dive in. Number one. Your credit score. Yes, if you do not know this by now, I don't know where you've been. Probably been under a rock and not watching my videos because credit plays an important part when you're getting any type of loan, not just mortgages, a car loan, a personal loan, any kind of loans, they're going to look at your credit score. So the better your credit score, the better the interest rate is for your home, for your loan, for anything. All right, so higher credit, better loan. Doesn't mean that if you have bad credit, you can't get a loan. It's just gonna cost you more, meaning your interest rate is gonna be more, meaning your payments are gonna be higher. Depends on how bad your credit is. That is true. <laughs> Number two, your debt to income ratio, AKA your DTI. So if you don't know, credit is here and your DTI is right under it. The reason being is because your DTI has a direct correlation to your credit score. The lower your debt to income ratio, the higher your credit normally is. Now, when your credit is low, it usually means you're over leveraged, meaning you have too much debt and versus how much income you have. So when you're looking at a mortgage or when you're trying to get qualified for a mortgage, we're going to look at all your debt. We run your credit, we look at all your debt, and we're going to compare that to how much income you have and how much room is left extra to then pay for a mortgage. So that's why we say your DTI matters, debt to income ratio. Number three, employment history. Now, when you're buying a house, we're going to want to make sure you have a job or you have some kind of income because you got to understand the bank is taking a risk giving you this loan. They want to make sure that their loan is secure because you have a job. You have some kind, you have some kind of way to pay them back. They want to make sure the bank isn't in the industry of losing money, they're in the industry of making money or loaning money. And one of the ways they do that is by giving you a mortgage. So they want to make sure that, hey, you've been working for at least two years, a year, you have some kind of income coming in. Is it a rental property? They want to make sure that they can see money is coming in. This is generating steady and consistent income is coming in so they can feel safe. Like, okay, we know he can pay us back on time and in full. Mm -hmm. Number four, your down payment. Now, the down payment matters. Too stupid to understand this. Matters. I don't know why a lot of people think that <clears throat> I'm gonna buy a house. I don't need money now. I'm just gonna qualify based off my income, which is correct, you can. But the bank wants you to have what we call skin in the game. They wanna make sure that, hey, you saved up some of your own money and you put it down because it takes away some of the risk for them because now they're not funding the loan 100%. They're funding 80% of it. They're funding 96.5%. They're funding a portion of it, but you still put some of that money yourself. You're taking on some of the risk. Exactly. The bank is taking on some risk, so they want you to take on some risk. Now, don't get me wrong. There are 100% down programs, those funky programs, but most programs want you to put something down and you still have closing costs you have to pay for. So even if they give you a little down payment assistant, you still have a closing cost at the end that they're gonna expect you to pay for. And the benefit though of putting down more is that, that what the bank does, your monthly payments will be a little bit less. Because you're borrowing less from the bank, so your payments are less. Now granted, there are programs like the VA where they have no down payments, but that's different. That's a special federal program to thank veterans for their service. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, number five, 
Property appraisal and inspection. Okay, so there's two different things. Once you get a property, I always tell my clients, please do an inspection. Because at the end of the day, I'm not an inspector. I don't know everything that's wrong with a property. I don't know everything. So that's their job and that's what an inspector's job is. But an inspector is not an appraiser. An appraiser is a third party that the bank sends to look to make sure that property you're buying isn't a lemon. So they're gonna look to see if some things are wrong, but they're also gonna do what's most important. They're gonna give their expert opinion on how much the property is worth to make sure that if you're buying this for 500,000, it's worth 500,000 or more. They don't want you buying something for 500,000, it's worth 400,000. That's their job. Now your inspector should not be saying, hey, let me give you the appraised value of this because that's not their job. They're there to inspect it to make sure the property is in good condition. The appraiser is the one who's gonna tell you the value of your house. Now your realtor will give you what's called comps to make sure that it looks good, but your appraiser is the one who's really gonna give you that finding number to make sure you're buying a good property. So for the appraiser, like for if you have an inspector who gave you like an appraisal amount, isn't that kind of like having a plumber fix your roof? Exactly, 100%. Number six, documentation. Now, documentation is important because we have to make sure you are who you say you are. We want to make sure your social security is right. We want to make sure your ID is correct because there's a lot of fraud going on. So we want to make sure that we have all the documents so when the bank asks for your bank statements, we got that. When they ask for your W-2s, we have that. So we ask for a file. So if you're going to get qualified or thinking about it, Make the file now. Do it! Do it! Have it, everything ready to go. So when you speak to, hey, Malcolm, oh, you need my file, no problem. Here, boom. You have your W-2s. You have two most recent payments. You have the two months bank statements. You have everything that we need to qualify. It makes the process quicker and easier for you. All right, number seven, shopping around. Now, I hate when people do this, but I do understand it. The reason why I hate it is because as loan officers, we put a lot of work, especially me and my team. We put a lot of work into working with you, helping you get everything situated. So when you shop around, it's like, yeah, you did all that work, but I don't know if I wanna work with you. It's like dating, which I understand you have to do, but at least for myself, I give you the best rate possible. So even when you shop around, I still usually beat those rates. Now, knock on wood, so far I've been really good, but I do understand shopping around is usually a benefit for the client because they wanna make sure they're getting the best rate. But just remember, just because they're promising you the best rate doesn't always mean you get the best service. So compare it. A little bit of sometimes getting a better rate and a horrible service isn't always worth it. Mm -hmm. Number eight, overcoming challenges. Now, in every loan file, there's always challenges. That's why I always say you want to be with someone who's experienced, who knows what they're doing, and they're willing to adapt because there's things that are gonna pop up, things that are gonna happen. Maybe a, a life circumstance happens. Maybe you realize, hey, I'm short money, Malcolm, what do I do? Like these things happen. So you want a loan officer who's able, who you're able to talk with, you feel comfortable and who's able to help you get around and navigate the rough waters when it's time. You want a captain. And that's what my team and I, we try to do. So find someone who you feel comfortable with. Don't just go to anyone to do your loan. I don't like that. Number nine. Mortgage insurance. Okay, so if you put anything, if you're putting down less than 20%, you're gonna get hit what's called PMI, which is insurance that the bank makes you pay for. You're paying in case you default on the property, meaning you stop making payments. They have that money in reserve so they can use that for their litigation charges, their litigation course. Does that make sense? They're using that to protect themselves in case you default and they have to go to court to foreclose and that stuff. So that extra money goes to that. Once you put down 20%, you don't pay this additional charge on your monthly mortgage because you own enough of it where they're like, okay, it's more of a secured loan. Remember what I was saying with down payments? This is securing. So I'm going to another video and I'm gonna talk about these nine things in more depth, but I just wanted to give you guys Overview. An overview, thank you, a bird eye's view of the nine things that really matter when you're getting qualified for a mortgage. I hope this helps you. If I missed anything, put it in the comment section. Over and out. Uh -huh.